Hello, hello, and welcome to today's post. Uh, we ended off with me getting a very uh, lovely invite to Matt and Tanya's scavenger hunt at their home. That should have been a, a, a ding, ding, bing, bing, bonk, bonk moment for me. But uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this series, this was a pilgrimage that I went on and I had blinders on, blinders. So let's see how this story unfolds. Was he serious? How in the world, after all we've shared with each other, after all the confession sessions after work, after the poem he wrote me, he had the gall to invite me to a scavenger hunt he and his girlfriend were hosting? I was furious. I ignored him the whole day and he knew something was up. So he came to ask me if something was wrong. I told him to just stop. Stop talking to me, stop flirting with me, stop everything until he's figure out what he wants. I said, I can't have, I can't keep having these roller coasters of emotions. One day you're into me and the next day you're confused. Just figure your life out and I'm gonna go on with mine, okay? The next day he didn't talk to me, he didn't come around or even acknowledge me at lunchtime in the staff room. I guess he was taking me seriously, but I felt like a part of me was missing. I felt rejected. I went home that night totally depressed. Had I completely messed up? Should I, should I have stayed with David and given him another chance? He was just so scared that he was losing me. That's why he broke the door down. I began feeling like I've completely, completely messed up my life. The next morning, Matt had to give me something school related. He was ultra professional. It almost seemed as if he was angry at me. At recess, I went into his office and he told me that not speaking to me was so hard on him. My heart melted. He did care. I totally agreed and told him how I felt a piece of me was missing. The rest, oh, the rest of the week, we went back to normal. We flirted, had fun, and he was back to coming around my room again. Yay! Life is beautiful. How quickly emotions can change. On Friday, the school had a really fun day planned. It was all about fitness. So as a school, we all did an aerobics class. Matt um, did the aerobics class beside me and he kept complimenting me on my legs. That was new. No one had ever done that before. I did notice him hanging around the instructor afterwards though. Another teacher noticed too, and later she told me that at lunch she was bugging him about how interested he was in chatting, chatting with the instructor afterwards and how pretty she was. And he said, yeah, I got her number. She's got a great body. My stomach fell. My heart fell. What the hell was going on? I thought he was different. I knew he was flirty, but now everything is piecing together and I am fed up. I am totally going to move on with Tony and spend time with myself and my friends. I really can't be with someone who has this quality. I feel so strong right now. Yes, it is time for Erin to stand up and be herself now. I'm going to focus on myself. I spent the next week singing with the guys in the basement, dancing to the Gypsy Kings, among other things, with Tony. 
and feeling absolutely in love with the freedom and with my life. Then at the end of the week, I heard that uh, Matt moved out and ended thing with his girlfriend. That's where I'm going to stop. <laughs> oh my goodness, girls. Okay, so lots of commentary I could make, but I almost feel like it's trite if I make it because it's so blatantly obvious. Are there not signs? Like, one of the biggest signs is that, okay, I could give the invitation maybe to him, but for him to not even owe me the courtesy of talking to me about that and saying, look, we are doing this scavenger hunt. I know it's going to seem weird, but I'm trying to see if things are going to work out between her and I. Like, But no communication. So again, communication is the number one thing. And I was getting furious and angry and upset inside, but I wasn't communicating to him. What did I choose to do? I chose to not speak with him, right? Or I chose to get really angry with him and then shut down. So this became my pattern, get really angry and then put the wall. And the wall totally comes from my lack of trusting men and which stems back from my grandfather. So that was the first one. But then the second one, I mean, okay, yes, everybody looks and everything, but if my father told me an amazing piece of advice, he said that if someone loves you, they will do anything to be with you. And he was, I wasn't asking for love even. I was just like, just be honest. So the fact that he was saying all these, like, I'm not even telling you everything he's saying because I'm trying to have a bit of respect for my husband now and not going so open. But to have that dishonesty with me and then behind the scenes be all nice and loving and open and deep, deep amongst how I'm making him feel in his life, how, how I'm making him come alive, how I'm inspiring him to live his life in a different way. I mean, he was going like way out there. To get these bombshells was like, should have been an eye opener that he's not ready for this. So anyway, I'm sure you can see where this is all going because uh, the way I'm ending this today is, uh, yeah, so he finally did move out, which is a move, a step, a move, and he ended things with his girlfriend. So come back tomorrow and see how this all progresses. <laughs> see you tomorrow.